Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to set up algebraic word problems. Today we'll do problem number 91 and 92. Problem number 91, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. It says find two find a two-digit number that happens to be equal to 8 times the sum of his digits 8 times the sum of his digits for example for example if we have uh, 37 the sum of the digit is 7 plus 3 which is 10 and 8 times that is 80 and 80 does not equal 80 does not equal 8 times 8 times the sum of his digits sum of his digits is 10 8 times the sum of the digits does not equal the number itself it says find the two digit number such that it find the two digit number that is equal to 8 times the sum of its digits. We have to look at that number but before we can do that, before we can begin the process, we have to first ask ourselves how do we represent a notion of a two digit number in the language of algebra. How do we represent a notion of a two digit number in the language of algebra using algebraic notation. Something that we learn in problem number 65. It's important that you watch this problem first. Watch problem number 65 first before you can continue with this one. For example, for example, if you have a number 73, let's say, 73 is so called because 73 is made up of 7 tens and a 3, which is why it's called the 10 digit. 10 digit here is 7. 10 digit here is 7 because it tells us how many tens we have. We have 7 tens. So if 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 uh, if we re let me start from the top here. I, I left no room here. Let's, let's, let me start. If we were to let if we were to use u for unit digit and t for ten digit. If we were to use u for unit digit and ten for t for ten digit, and if t happens to be seven and u happens to be three. The question is, how do we represent 73? Do we represent 73 as simply T U? The answer is no, because T U in the language of algebra represents 7 times 3, 21. It does not represent 73. T U does not equal 73. It equals 21. So how do we represent, how do we represent the notion of 73 using these symbols? T and the U. T for 10 digit, U for unit digit. That is something what we learn in problem number 65. What we do is, we ask ourselves, how many tens do we have? We have seven tens. Seven is our, seven is our T. T equals seven. And how many tens do we have? We have seven tens. So it's 10 times T. Technically it is t times 10 is what it is because it tells you how many tens we have. We have seven tens. We have seven tens plus how many unit digits do we have? We have three unit digits. U equals three plus three. So a two digit number in the language of algebra is represented as t times 10 plus u or to make it look a little bit better we write that as 10 t, 10 t plus u. 10t plus u. This is how we represent a notion of a two-digit number. In that problem, problem number 65, we went on to learn how to represent a three-digit number. So let's begin our process now. So we are told that we have a two-digit number. We have a two-digit number which happens to be equal to eight times the sum of its digits. But two-digit number is right here. So let's put it here. 10 times t plus u where t happens to be the 10 digit, u happens to be the unit digit. And this number right here that we wrote here has to equal to 8 times its sum of the digits, which is very straightforward. We can start the process now. 8 times the sum of its digits, which is t plus u. The rest is downhill. The rest is going to be a matter of 2 seconds. 8 times t, 8 times u equals 10t plus u, 10t plus u, let's bring the u on that side and bring the t on this side so we end up with 2t equals 7u. 
or if you like this in turn implies that the ratio of 10 digit to unit digit is 7 to 2 ratio of 10 digit to unit digit is 7 to 2 as you can see it's a two step process three step process and since these are digits since the, these variables u and the p represent digits unit digit and the 10 digit of course they have to be one digit the t cannot be anything other than 7 the u cannot be anything other than 2 in other words since the ratio of t to u is 7 to 2 it is impossible it is impossible for t to be 14 and u to be u to be 4 it is impossible for t to be 70 and u to be 20 because these are digits these are digits since the ratio is 7 to 2 since the ratio is 72 that implies since the ratio is 72 that implies that implies that t must be t must be 7 and u must be 2 there you go we just found our number the ans answer is the number that we're looking for is 72 the number that we're looking for is 72 we can quickly verify it let's verify it on the top here we can quickly verify it make sure that it is in fact correct 72 is the number that we're claiming and 72 has to equal 8 times 7 plus 2 because that's the sum of the digits isn't it 8 7 plus 2 is 9 and 8 nines are 72 that's our answer the answer is 72 let's do one more shall we Number 92, find two numbers whose sum is 30 and whose difference is 6. The sum is 30 and the difference is 6. There are two ways we can go about solving this problem and you're going to do both of them. There are two ways. One is what is known as simultaneous equations method. Simultaneous equation method which is very straightforward. We have the sum we are told is 30 so we're going to make up two variables x plus y equals 30 and we know that their difference is 6, so x minus y is 6, hence the simultaneous equation. The reason why this method is very quick and very efficient here is because these are very simple equations. We add up the two equations, the y's are going to drop out, 2x equals 36, which means x equals half of that, 3 has 1, 2, and then 16 has 8, so it's 18. If x equals 18, then y must be 18 minus something equals 6, which means y must be 12 y must be 12. There you go. 18 plus 12 is 30 and 18 minus 12 is 6. So that was one method. Very quick, very simple, very efficient. Another method is what is known as substitution method. In the substitution method we do not have two equations we just substitute one variable in terms of the other which is why it's called the substitution method so let let s be the smaller number let s be the smaller number if s is the smaller number that implies that g the greater number the greater number because the difference is 6 since the difference is 6 the greater number must be whatever the s is plus 6 more that must be the greater number g represents the greater number i didn't write it but that's what that is don't mix up the two methods here. Let's put a demarcation. Let's put a demarcation. I do not know when we learned the word demarcation, but we did. I do remember that we did learn the word demarcate in our vocabulary lessons 1 through 100. I'm not quite at 100 right now as I speak today. 
I'm up to day number 94 or 95 I believe. Today happens to be January 22nd, 2015. So here's a small number and we are as of right now, I'm not quite at 100 as I said, but we learned the word demarcate in our vocabulary lessons. So here the smaller number is being represented by S, the larger number is being represented by S plus 6. And their sum, S plus S plus 6, we are told, is 30. Combine two S's, two S's plus 6 equals 30, which means two S's must be 24, and therefore S must be 12. If the smaller number is 12, the larger one is 6 more than that, which means the larger one must be 18. So this is one method, the substitution method or the simultaneous equation method. They are both equally simple because it's a very straightforward simple problem. This is a baby problem. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.